The movie starts with a scene on the battlefield, where the Goguryeo soldiers are running their horses in a specific direction. Taichung soldiers on the other hand, are fully armed and shoot their arrows as their opponent approaches. The attackers have knocked off their horses while others continue moving forward. Now Taijung soldiers standing there have shields and they begin to kill Goguryeo soldiers. However, some of Taijung's special soldiers appeared from the back of Goguryeo's army and started killing them. The purpose of the Tang army is to take over the fortress. Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to summarize the 2018 South Korean historical epic film, The Great Battle. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon, so you never miss my future videos. As they are encircled, one of the soldiers says loudly, we will be rooted out, we must retreat. A retreat flag appears and we see Samuel, a new character enter the scene. It is shown that Taijung stands at the side with a hostage girl and asks her what the outcome of the battle would be. According to legend, the girl has the ability to see Lord's visions. This girl possesses the bow of Goguryeo's King Jamung, which she kept as a symbol of victory in many wars. The Emperor Taijung tries to shoot an arrow from it, but he fails because the arrow is too tight and cannot be pulled by a man with ordinary power. As the Goguryeo soldiers are pulling back, Samul's brother is stabbed by an enemy soldier and dies. Samul returns to the general with his brother's body on his shoulders. He tells him that they have lost more than 150,000 soldiers and about 60,000 more wounded. Samuel and his brother were fighting as trainee cadets in this battle. General Yun acknowledged the loyalty of Samul and his brother, and then he assigns him a responsibility, saying he will move to the fortress of Ansi, in order to triumph in killing a person named Commander Yang. Then he gives him a sword and said that he might be killed in the process. Samul says, I swear of my life that I will accomplish your mission. On the way, Samul meets with two of his soldiers who request Samul to include them in the mission. When they reach a field in the next scene, they saw some men trying to pull a trapped cart out of mud, but they are helpless. One of the men who saw Samul and his soldiers asks for help. Samul asks those people whether they are from Ansi. He said he wants to meet the commander. One of the men says that he is Commander Yang. Before Samul say something, one of Commander Yang's companions says, I have heard that Taijung has sent spies who can speak our language. I am sure that these are those people. Samul's soldiers take out their swords but are killed. Then he moves towards Samul holding a sword to his throat, but Yang forbids him, stating that he must capture and keep him alive for interrogation. He also says, we will look into it later. Now Yang brings Samul to a place for interrogation. He tells him that he is called a traitor by the soldiers of Yun, and now you have come to the fortress of a traitor. Samul tells him that he has been pursued by the enemy soldiers and that Ansi is his homeland whether he likes it or not. Meanwhile, an elder man, who seems to be the father of the Ansi fort, welcomes Samul for coming there because Samul is the last surviving member of their clan. In the next scene, Samul is standing alone holding the sword which is for the murder of Yang when he notices Yang was going somewhere and follows him. He saw that he went to a poor family's house and held their baby in his arms. That family gratifies him for his visit to their shabby home. Yang says that this baby has been born in Ansi, so my visit to your house and congratulating you is compulsory. Samul is shocked to see their sympathetic behavior and the help of Yang with his people because Yang takes pain for his nation. Then Yang is shown pulling the rope with his few soldiers for helping purpose when suddenly they hear the siren. Yang and his soldiers move in the direction indicated by the siren, where they observe a few soldiers on the opposite side of the wall in an open field. Commander Yang says that they have come here for attacking the fortress, and says that this is only a recon unit. If they are here, then Taijung and his army are not far, he will soon be here to seize the fortress. He asks everyone to get ready for the war as the enemy approaches. 
Next in Commander Yang's room, he asks Samol to show his dagger. Samol shows it to him and he asks him to trim his beard with it. As trimming the beard is essential for every soldier before going to war. At that time, Samol's dagger is on Yang's throat, and as he trims his beard, it was too easy for him to kill Yang if he wanted, but he doesn't. Then everyone leaves their houses and gathers at the wall, as the siren echoes again. Now everyone is ready for battle including female soldiers. One of them is Becca, who is the younger sister of Commander Yang. Commander Yang proceeds to ask his soldiers that if they observed on the opposite side that an army is holding the red flags and advancing toward the fortress, then they will not wait for my orders. He says, I'll not ask you to stop fighting, as I've never learned to pull back. I never start giving up. And I've got to learn that you should fight when the need emerges. If someone wants to undermine things you cherish, you must take a risk. This is a tremendous opportunity and you should not end up wasting it. Take a glance at the ANSI people. They are the people who have faith in us. We will keep them safe. Then all soldiers speak the catchword, battle, and get ready to fight. On the opponent's side, a standing soldier says that Commander Yang is our target and all his struggles are in vain. The other soldier clarifies that Tai Jung is such a type of person that he will take the fortress because he gets what he wanted. Tai Jung orders his soldiers, you have to occupy the land of Ansi enslaving their kids and raping every woman they have. War broke out and their attack started with throwing large stones through the catapult, which caused great destruction to the fortress wall. Commander Yang saves the life of Samul from hitting by a big rock. Tai Jung is observing everything while sitting in the back, he is also observing that the Ansi wall is too strong to fall as it was filled with mud. So, he commands all the soldiers to climb up the wall and they are shouted, forward. On the other side, Yang keeps ordering his soldiers to fight harder. The opponent's army continues to move forward for climbing up the wall, adjusting their ladders with it. They are in a large number but Commander Yang is also doing his best for his defense. They try to throw stones at the opponents, so they may not climb up the wall. Yang commands to deploy Wolf Teeth Striker, as it is the only way to stop them from climbing the wall. Tai Jung keeps saying, attack and destroy, directing toward the gate. So, the soldiers start to move towards the gate. They push the gate with a large wooden lag which eventually breaks it, and many soldiers step into the fortress while the fight continues. The entered soldiers are trapped between the gate and already made strong railing to protect the enemy soldiers from advancing inside the fortress. Commander Yang orders Becca and the fellow captain to attack the trapped soldiers. Becca kills everyone with arrows with the assistance of her female soldiers. While the Taijung soldiers adjusted ladders along with the wall were removed from there. Samul standing beside Yang is observing everything above the fortress wall. Yang commands close order formation and pushes the remaining enemy soldiers off the wall. It was a destructive battle for the invading forces, as Commander Yang made them run away from the fortress. Taijung orders his soldiers to retreat. While seeing this, Yang's soldiers shout loudly the word, victory, and win the war for the time being. Commander Yang and his men are welcomed by the people as they return victorious. But this victory remains for a very short time as the invading army attacked again, this time at night. All soldiers move ahead with Samul as the siren echoes. While Yang continues to fight actively and bravely. They threw fire arrows which cause a huge fire inside the Ansi fortress, and spreads everywhere. Yang uses his arrows and bow to shoot an oil balloon in the air causing destruction to the enemy's covered ladders. Suddenly, Commander Yang falls down, receiving a severe wound from the arrow thrown at him. A soldier who appears to be Tai Jung's best man appears to kill Yang, but Samol puts him to death, coming from the backside. Yang is astounded to see him as a person who has come to kill him, now becoming his savior. Commander Yang is unconscious and taken to his chamber, where he comes to his senses after four days.
he was informed that all invading forces had retreated towards Taizhong. The next day again, the soldiers of Taizhong are gathering in front of the fortress. Taizhong says that he had triumphed the vast land of thousands of kilometers in every direction, then why can't I take down a small fortress? And he loses his temper. He sends that lady with the visions and has King Bao to Commander Yang to inform him of the consequences he would face if he did not surrender. That lady places King Jemung's Bao before Commander Yang and tells him that she has been sent by Taizhong. She also informs him that Taizhong has no other way but to use his last option before his final attack by building a dirt mound that will be higher than Ansi. She says he will attack Yang, and he will never be escaped from his attack according to Taizhong. She also reveals that Taizhong's army will attack horribly shooting their arrows continuously which will cover the sky. She says he will offer you anything if you bend yourself before him. Otherwise, everything will be eradicated with the accomplishment of the dirt mound. Yang says that he will defend Ansi at any cost but won't surrender to Taizhong. Taizong orders his men to speed up their work on the building of the dirt mound. He asks his advisors how long it will take to complete this project. They say that it will take mostly two months, as they must have to complete it before the start of the winter season. They are building a big mountain of dirt in front of the Ansi fort with the cover of shields to protect its workers from the incoming arrows from Ansi. On the other side, Commander Yang thinks for his people as they will all be killed if the dirt mountain is completed. Samul takes his permission to go to General Yun for assistance. Unwillingly, Yang sends him to ask General Yun for his help against their common enemy. On the other hand, Yang's Captain Paso asks him that they should attack Taizhong camp while his project is under construction. Becca is against the decision, saying that it is like committing suicide if someone goes to Taizhong's place. It will all be in vain if Captain Paso returns back after getting defeated. But he gets permission from Yang, saying that they have no other way. However, Simi, the women with visions, alert Taizhong's soldiers by shooting an arrow from the bow of King Jemung to Taizhong's camp. Taizhong's soldiers are busy in the preparation for war. Paso attacks them in darkness going inside the camp, but it was a trap and Paso is sent back after wounding him badly with arrows. Paso is passed away, but before that, he told Yang that there is an informer of Taizhong in their camp. Becca cries when she sees the dead body of Paso. She was in love with him and wanted to marry him. Later, it is revealed that the lady who had the bow of King Jemung had sent a message through an arrow for entrapping Captain. That woman is murdered by the Samul. Becca enraged rushes to Taizhong's camp, in order to take revenge on Captain Paso. She is also killed while fighting with Taizhong, but before she died, she put a slight scratch on Taizhong's face by shooting an arrow at him. Her dead body is also sent back to Ansi. In the next scene, Samul goes to meet General Yun and tells him that Commander Yang is fighting for his and the people of Ansi's life. He was also informed that Ansi would be at risk with the completion of the dirt mound. Samul informs him that Yang is not a traitor, and he is loyal to the companionship of Goguryeo. By hearing all this, General Yun says, had I sent you to disobey me? I had not sent you to Ansi to bring me such words. Afterward, he places his sword on his neck, but Samul tells him that Yang is a citizen of this country. If you consider him a traitor then it's okay, but the people of Ansi still want to fight for him. Meanwhile, Commander Yang is planning with his soldiers, as Yang's soldiers say the soil has many pebbles and it cannot be mixed well with each other. The mound may be toppled if we make it toppled by building a cave underneath it. But it is also not an easy task to build a cave on such short notice. Yang says that he fully trusts all his mining workers and they can do it. On the other side, Taizhong is busy in preparation for war while the soldiers continue to work. They finally construct a huge wall calling it a splendid view. Taizhong offers his workers a feast for their excellent work and told them that they will topple down Ansi tomorrow. In the same way, 
Commander Yang is also busy with his battle preparation. His mine workers told him that they had planned to topple the tunnel with fire to the wooden logs that were fixed to support the cave ceiling. But that night there was heavy rain and a lot of water accumulated in the cave. The next morning, the number of soldiers of Taijung is in a standing position, while Yang's mine workers are in the cave filled with water. They ask, what should we do? As the wooden logs won't catch fire as they are completely wet. One of them says we can chop it with our axes. Yang forbade them that they will die, but they insist that they would die anyway if Ansi fell into the hands of Taijung they start slamming into pillars with their axes while the war breaks out. Yang's workers continually hit the pillars in the cave as they started to end the route of that place of attack. As a result, the earth begins to quake, and the dirt mound starts falling down. Yang's mine workers sacrifice their lives in that cave for the sake of the Ansi people. Taijung's army begins to crumble and die on the hillock. Yang's strategy was very effective and it was a huge defeat for Taijung's army. Yang has now given an order to move ahead and Yang begins to climb the dirt mound and start pushing the enemy backward. Enraged Taijung says, I need Yang's head on a plate, so I will be expected to pay for it. The attacks are continuous on both sides continuously, shooting their arrows even as night falls while the fighting continues. Yang encourages his soldiers by saying that they should not lose hope. The fight continues till the next morning when we see that Yang's hands are wounded, because of the continuous fighting. Finally, Yang's army is out of arrows, which is sensed by Tai Zheng's army. They shouted that Yang's army was out of ammunition and ordered his soldiers to attack harder. Commander Yang orders his soldiers to bring King Jemung's bow, but his soldiers say that no one can pull it. As it is a long-range bow and Tai Zheng was too far away. He asks for help from his lord while trying to shoot the arrow. He says, we will end this war. And shoots the arrow. There is complete silence. The arrow goes straight into the eye of Tai Zheng, and he loses sight in one eye. Suddenly, there is the noise of a large army coming toward them. His soldiers shouted that it was the Goguryeo army. Yang and his entire army shout victory as they see Goguryeo's army coming for their help. Tai Zheng accepts his defeat, saying that he has lost. Samul also reaches there with his Goguryeo army. A text epilogue reveals that after three years of war, King Taijung succumbs to his wounds and dies. While dying he told others not to attack Goguryeo. In the final scene, Yang and Samul are discussing Ansi Fortress and Samul asks for his permission to go to the capital to complete his cadet training. Yang told him that Ansi was his home and he could come any time. And Samol leaves riding on his horse while Yang watches him from the top of his house in Ansi Fort. The movie gives us a lesson that no matter how strong your enemy is when it comes to your honor and the life of your people, you must stand for it. Holding your ground against a ten times larger army and defeating it is a courage that cannot be achieved with higher numbers and advanced weaponry. All of this can be achieved with courage and sincerity with your people and your land. Thanks for watching.